Welcome to the Rebel Love Show. We are a once a week podcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro pot, pro gun, and pro coffee. You can find all of our content on Voluntary Virtues Network, where we are syndicated. Uh, go check that out because they actually have some great uh, uh, anti state shows on their pod- on their uh, YouTube channel, which is amazing. Um, we're also on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, YouTube, and of course, uh, Facebook.com and rebelloveshow.com. I am Rob Mathias. And I am Shire Dude. And today our lovely guest is none other than the uh, Dr. Frankenfurter what? of the Shire, <laughs> the one and only Amanda Bolden, the foundress. You know, his character is completely evil, like he controls and manipulates and takes advantage of everyone. You are running for office. <laughs> am I wrong? Okay, fine. Yeah, you got me. All right. Uh, anywho, um, first, before we go into the show, as always, we have some uh, announcements to talk about. Keenvention is literally in one week, not one week, in a couple of days, and then the week right yeah, now. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, God, my mic. Oh, my God. I might have to. There, there's an announcement right there. New, new I know. mic cord coming new soon. New mic cord coming soon <laughs> to the Rebel <laughs> Love Show. Um, send Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, send Bitcoin. Help us, please. <laughs> uh, anywho, uh, conventions uh, at the end of this week. Uh, we all have panels to discuss. Considering you are as our guest here, what panel are you doing at Keenvention? Charity. Charity. Oh, yeah, I saw that. that who's, on your, who's on your panel? Dale Everett, Stephanie Murphy, and Teresa... E. Yeah. Yeah, that works. I, I always forget how to Facebook pronounce Facebook name is not her real last name, and I don't remember what her real last name is. Well, your Facebook oh, name isn't your Teresa real name. Teresa Earl. That's her name. Your your Facebook name isn't your real name either. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of like a status quo here. The names, the you know, names choose you. Well, oh, that's deep. I can understand that. Yeah, that's that's really deep. Um, what has Dale done in... I, I understand what everyone else has done that on the pa- on charity. Well, I'm not Dale familiar with his charity. Or yeah, Dale, well, Dale used to live in Keene, and he spent a lot of time volunteering there um, doing charitable stuff. Oh. So. I d- now I that he lives in Manch, he does different stuff with his time. But, um, yeah, okay. that was he was kind of on the forefront of that sort of activity in Keene back in the day. Okay. You'll have to go to the panel if you want to hear more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, speaking of, what is your panel, Shire Dude? I'm on the New Movers panel with uh, Selfie the Outlaw and... Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I don't understand how she is the moderator of <laughs> the new. <laughs> we were just talking panel. about this earlier. I was talking about this with, some, with somebody because uh, she didn't technically move here for the Free State Project. Like I don't think she's signed this. Oh no, she intent. definitely did not move for the Free State Project. And, obviously, and she's moved away now. But of course, this panel was decided before that all happened. I don't, I don't even know who that is. You selfie, wait, the the selfie the outlaw. Selfie. Yeah. <laughs> Her, her, I guess selfie. her real no, name selfie, is uh, like, Josie. You know, selfie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Josie Wales? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I, that's her new name is Selfie the Outlaw. That name actually chose her. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how she's... I don't know. I love Josie. She's amazing, uh, except for the fact that she moved. But uh, I don't know how she's doing a new movers panel for someone who doesn't live here anymore. That just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, you're on that panel, so uh, hopefully you have fun talking about. You know what you could bring up, like you know, and there's here's how you stayed, here's how you don't stay. Like, you could bring <laughs> that up in conversation with her on the panel. Like, what caused you to move? Just call her out during the panel. That'd be pretty funny. Yo, you should, man. Make a name for yourself. Call her out on the on the <laughs> panel. Um. Anyways, I'm going to be doing a. Uh, I'm on two panels. I'm on the direct action panel. Teresa's on that as well. Uh, so is uh, I know it's Garrett's panel and a bunch of other activists on that as well. Uh, and then right after that, I'm back to back, man. Right after that, I am moderating a secession panel with uh, uh, Daryl, Lauren, Conan, and Jason Sorens. Yeah, I'm last second, but Jason Sorens is on my secession panel, which seems... That's om- crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, the founder of the Free State Project talking about secession at Keenvention. That seems like... Uh, 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 you're smiling at me <laughs> weird like you want to say something people worship him like he's a celebrity but they're really chill humble people i oh, mean well. he he wrote a paper he had an idea but he didn't move you here you moved yourself here no you're no, no. a celebrity too i mean as much as he is and you know he only moved here recently 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I moved here before he did. Yeah. Um, that that's not no. It's just the fact that like he he doesn't represent. He's, he's like, sometimes he's like the uh, poster child for the Free State Project. I understand the Free State Project is not a secessionist movement in any way, shape, or form, but it's it's a nonprofit. Oh, that's it's right. A, it's it a nonpartisan nonprofit. I don't know. Non, non, non thing. Non. It's not anything. It's, it's a bus. It's it's, like it's nothing. It's it's <laughs> it's just it's like a it's a sign on a Bitcoin website saying move here. Yeah. That's pretty much all. It's it, a travel it is. agency. <laughs> it's a travel yeah. agency <laughs> for anarchists. Sunny, sunny yes. New Hampshire. Yeah. There there <laughs> you go. Well, a, at any rate, the poster child of the uh, anarchist uh, destination travel agency is going to be on my panel. So that's cool. Uh, so into the the meat of the crux of you being here uh shire sharing what what is this about i've never i have i haven't i wasn't here for last year so <laughs> act as if i have no idea what it is well i moved for the fsp in 2009 uh september of 2009 and then in f february of 2011 my dad called me on the phone and told me that he had been diagnosed with leukemia and I moved from Texas so I was a good 2,000 miles away at probably one of the most intense moments in my adult life um, and two months later he died um, and I I did make it down there in time for that I guess that's I don't know if that's a good experience or not but it was meaningful to me to be there when that happened and um, you know your typical grief and loss trouble sleeping all that stuff and by October I guess I had gotten to a more stable place emotionally and I realized that Thanksgiving was coming and my dad for probably 10 years before he passed away had spent every Thanksgiving delivering food to families in need all over Dallas um, the first year that he did it with my stepmom he delivered to only one household and before he passed away he had grown to um, like 250 to 300 households and over time, he roped in his friends and co-workers and um, dragged me along in the car at like 8 a.m. on a Sunday, which is a horrible time to be awake when you're a teenager. Um, so I grew up around it. And um, so I started thinking, sort of wondering if in his absence, anyone was going to pick up the project in Dallas. And then I thought about how free staters out here, which make up the majority of my friends, value privately funded voluntary charity so I talked to um, a couple people about it believe it or not I was nervous about the idea and I got good feedback so I posted to Facebook about it and got a really big response and people were really interested in volunteering donating and you know participating in any way they could so in about two weeks time about over a thousand dollars was donated and we delivered food to about 50 households in New Hampshire all of them in Concord and then um, a year went by and um, I was sitting in Church of the Sword and you know I've actually only gone to one Church of the Sword and I was at Porkfest oh well that one's different than your normal it's fun oh no no yeah, I, haven't, I actually haven't gone to the normal you drink beer at 11 a.m. I've, yeah. I've never been can you describe it a little bit more for people who Church of the Sword yeah. um, it was established by Kevin Bloom and Kirk McNeil some really active free staters here and at church of the sword let's see pedro goes a lot right yeah are you so a minister pedro no, no. they do have <laughs> um ministers i guess um but it really is like your it is it is full of tradition and uh, stuff like that like in a typ typical church service it's not just some tax shelter or whatever people might expect it to be um, so at, at Church of the Sword, first when you show up, there is fighting with foam swords. And they have fancy names for all of the activities. And then after fighting with foam swords, there's ranting. So you get a chance to yell about whatever you want or read a poem or a, a part of a book. Um, and usually they have like overturned buckets that they use as drums for like dramatic effect when you're reading. And then after the ranting, there's beer so you drink beer and there's a lottery which is good and part of the lottery money goes toward next week's beer and then after the lottery i believe that's when there's pie 
and they say that some religions tell you that um, there was pie before, but there isn't pie now. And some religions tell you that um, there's no pie now, but if you're good, you can have pie in the future. But only at Church of the Sword can you have pie today. That's beautiful. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, anyways, you you were at the Church of the Sword. Yeah. And someone was like, so are you going to do this again? You know, hand out food to people in need. And I was like, I don't know. It's kind of a one off. Just wanted to memorialize my dad, feel connected to him. And I think it was Emily Sandblade, maybe shoved a ten dollar bill in my direction and she's like here's your first donation and i was like okay fine i'll do it and then <laughs> that year we raised i think over five thousand dollars and delivered to almost 200 households so we went from 50 households to 200 so in you know two years i basically met my dad's um highest achievement before the end of his life and then in the third year which was last year 2013 i raised uh nine thousand dollars and delivered to um gosh three oh almost 400 households which ended up benefiting about 1300 people so in every household there's an average of like three and a half people do you expect to uh beat that uh number this, this year this year's goal is 500 households so it's a big process um we you know I, we try to raise as much money as we can and all the money comes in voluntarily and shire sharing is not a 501c3 charity Five one three C. I don't even know what the uh, letters are. I don't. Even I haven't know filled out that yeah. paperwork. But so the result of which is that uh, people can't deduct the donations from their taxes, so they they get no, I guess, uh, tax incentive. benefit. Yeah, there's yeah. no monetary incentive to donate to Shire Sharing. So uh, despite that, we have continued, you know, to continue success, growing every year. Um, more volunteers every year, more donations, bigger donations every year. To what do you attribute that kind of growth? Um, like how how did this get so big? Um, I think that it's a combination of word of mouth and, um, what's that, what's that word for, um, momentum? No, no, no. How people talk about, um, it relates to ostracism and like the free market of friendship and keeping the reputation. Yes, exactly. Reputation. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, reputation is everything in this community, bar none. Like you obviously if you you fuck up like you fuck up like everyone knows and if you do something amazing where it gets around of what you're doing so i can understand how reputation has definitely affected shire sharing yeah and every year i've tried to rope someone into making a video like doc short documentary about the entire process from beginning to end because i know that it's important to people that donate uh, to be able to see the results of their you know harder money well, if you don't mind, I, I do plan to go to those events and film a lot. Yes, I mind. I definitely <laughs> don't want volunteers. <laughs> like, I want to I volu volunteer and help out. Don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. But I do plan to, like, film, like, everything going That's on. Great. And, like, I have a raw channel, uh, youtube.com slash vribblerow. Um, but, uh, no, I, I plan to go and, like, film, like, from beginning to end and, like, actually follow, like, other, like, drop-offs and, like, follow go to a family and stuff like that and, like, the whole process from like beginning to end during the whole uh you know when you're packaging the food all the way to where it's delivered and whatnot because mm -hmm. well, one thing i like to do here is uh like just like this show in general it's just like i want to capture what life is like and especially when there's any kind of activism like showing like just reading a blog post doesn't do it for me like actually seeing pictures and video of what you know wh wh everyone does around here is a huge thing you know and it's like this show i try to capture it with it but like something like when something big like that happens like shire sharing i want to go there and i want to capture it i don't want to like you know it's almost like sometimes i almost view a youtube video as a current day or a modern historical document like imagine like a hundred years from now like you know people will go back and they'll look down and they'll see like you know it, it, it's you're documenting what happened and like even if it's just you know even if it's just uh you know a charity organization you're you're doing a charity outside of the state and you're showing that like libertarians aren't selfish you know that like anarchists in aren't general selfish. Aren't, yeah 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 it's like they work especially you know, in new hampshire exactly and you're that's not something that's talked about that's not something that's like you know it, it is in amongst us and whatnot but i mean hopefully more people see that uh but i mean most people consider people who oppose the state as very selfish and you know full of themselves and not you know caring about other people well i think that the the same is assumed about republicans it's basically just the people that champion 
um, funding welfare with taxes view anyone who doesn't support that as Darwinist, as, you know, um, someone that hopes that other people just, uh, you know, if you can't cut it, then whatever, die. I don't know. You know, Darwinist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying. The whole evolution, like, let people die off because they can't fend for themselves and whatnot. Yeah, that's what the left usually says about the right. Yeah, yeah. and so we're lumped into that. Yeah, even though we're not left or right, but nonetheless, you know, yeah, we, we kind of are lumped into that. Uh, what was Shire sharing, uh, I was really curious, how do you find the families? That was difficult the first year, and it's still difficult every year, and it's weird. Um so the way that my dad did it in Texas, he had a, a contact at Catholic Charities, which is a massive, partially privately funded um, charity organization. I mean, they apply for government grants and stuff, but other than that, they're they're basically privately funded, and it's you know the Catholic Church, and they just help people. They have clients, uh, you know, homeless people. Uh, women that have been beaten or something or, or men that have been beaten that does happen I don't want to be sexist and um, or refugees from other countries you know war-torn I guess they call them new Americans so Catholic Charities handles stuff like that all over the country and he worked with them in, in Texas and they sent him a list of just families on their client list that needed help so I I did the same thing here and the first place I called was Catholic Charities and believe it or not they were like yeah we don't need any help thanks so oh. I kept calling around, and eventually someone at Lutheran Social Services was head over heels about the idea, and they didn't have anyone helping their clients in that way. And they hooked me up with that initial list of, like, 50 houses. And then um, I just every year I keep calling more places because we've used up everyone at Lutheran's, you know, like, their client list. We were like, Psh, that's a quarter of what we need yeah. to meet our goal. So Friends of Forgotten Children is another similar sort of nonprofit. They're more of a food bank out in Concord. And a lot of people come there just to pick stuff up. They have jackets and, um, you know, winter clothes and things like that that people need. And I believe that uh, Friends of Forgotten Children was established with the, uh, oh, I don't know her name, but a woman who lived in Concord passed away. And she left all of her money, I guess, to, she wanted, in her will, she said she wanted this organization started in her memory or something and then we also get catholic charities finally you know bit and they've been participating as of last year and harbor homes sends us a lot of uh households to deliver to and harbor homes deals with um homeless people um or like precariously housed is what they call it like someone who's really couch surfing or living in their car they're not technically homeless because they're not sleeping outside but and they also deal with veterans, a lot of veterans. So it's really pleasing to me because, you know, I don't support the war, but I do support the troops. And I think that a lot of people were lied to, to join, the, to get them to join the war. You know, they suffer from a lot of um, emotional and physical disorders from having participated in the wars that we've had in this country over the last hundred years. Yeah. And I want to be able to help them um, in any way. Well, it's, it's definitely admirable. Um, how many... How much uh, hours do you put in on this? Five million bajillion. Like it's not like just like <laughs> listening count. to you talking about like all the charities you contacted and all this and doing that. Like I, I, I'm just like curious, like how many like literally hours of like com you know talk just calling people that uh, that you put in. It has to be into like close to a thousand. I don't know. I don't keep track, but I'm lucky to have had a job for the last several years that allows me to spend time not doing my job. So I've had t two different jobs over the last couple of years, and both of them have that flexibility in them. I don't have to take time off of work to accomplish these tasks. <coughs> okay. Um, all right. So uh, where can people donate to Shire Sharing? Uh, so the website is shiresharing.org, and it's Shire as in the last five letters in New Hampshire or the first five letters in Shire Dude. Um, <laughs> 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 and so it's S-H-I-R-E, Sharing org and on the website on the right hand side there's a you caring app or plugin whatever and you can click on that and donate with credit or debit card also on the you caring page that the that the button links to when you donate in the description on that page is the um the bitcoin address but also on the website shiresharing.org i believe we have a bitcoin button right at the top there on the right nice so definitely um i know bitcoin's not happy right now but 
Yeah, if anyone, anyone, that, like anyone that donates Bitcoin right now, they're 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 donating <laughs> more than just you yeah, know. Yeah, Roger Ver should send me Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah that the, guy. The, God, Bitcoin's at three. <laughs> it's like at three fifty today. I uh, I really want to go back. Just go back to six hundred. Just go back to six hundred. I'm I was okay with that. Like right now, it's low for me. Like I, I want. I was comfortable at six hundred. Hopefully, it'll go to the moon. It'll go up to like you know fifteen hundred. One day. One day or yeah. fifteen thousand or one hundred fifty thousand or fifty years, we'll all be millionaires. Yeah, all you need is just one bitcoin in twenty yeah. years, and you'll be like a billionaire. <laughs> Pedro is gonna have his like own planet in like five years. Who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> so people who are only listening and not watching the video are like, "Who's Pedro?" Probably. Well, they're that's, like, that's why the, are they that's talking the fun, to that's the fun thing about microphone. that's the fun thing about it. If they're listening out, if they're listening while they're on a treadmill on their on their iPhone or Android phone, they're like, "Shit!" Now I got to go back and watch the YouTube <laughs> video because like, there's we're talking about the a Pedro man. in the room mystery. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> if you want to know who Pedro he's is, he's the ghost who haunts the Rebel Love Show studio. Yes. There is a Shire Dude episode <laughs> dedicated to Pedro. Episode four, I believe. It's yeah. called Pedro. Yeah. yeah. Really? Watch. Mm-hmm. You have your own episode? <laughs> yeah. Do you have your own episode? Not yet. Not yet. I don't know. <laughs> you definitely deserve one at some point. Yeah. That would be fun. I don't have my own, but Ash does. The cat does. The studio cat. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's weird, too. Um, Anywho, it's like that, too. Um, <laughs> so, speaking of... Uh, I have no idea what reference it really means, but you're running for the the state. You're going into the. I'm trying to get a government job. Yeah, yeah, I want to be on the government dole. Hundred dollars a year. Hundred bucks, <laughs> sell out. Yeah, <laughs> it only took a hundred dollars to get the the sell your soul to the state. I'm gonna get a hundred sandwiches at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't 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 eat fast food. <laughs> don't 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 do it. Just we do have a a meals tax here, so I actually can't get a hundred sandwiches with my yeah. Red it, pay. It, it's like nine percent. Is it nine percent? Yeah. I think like so. That. Yeah. Well, that sucks. But you're running for well. Technically, you are going. You're basically already won. You, you're running unopposed. Is this uh, made of wood? Yes. Should I knock on it? Well, unless yeah. unless, unless the Republicans, uh, first off, you're running as a Democrat, which is uh, wah, wah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna, <laughs> but that I'm not. I hate both Republicans and Democrats. But that's one thing I love to see free staters like go into the opposite party just because why not, you know, um, and do whatever you can to get elected. Uh, well, I mean, when I was in. Texas I grew up Republican and my dad told me always vote Republican and I don't think he was like opposed to abortion um, based on conversations we had about that you know when I was a teenage girl Um, but he always voted Republican and he voted for Rick Perry who like uh, he's some kind of super psycho when it comes to women's bodies yeah you know but um, so that was the environment I was raised in and one day even when I was getting interested in politics and kind of hearing about Ron Paul I tried to go and register with the Republican Party in my hometown but they were really creepy and they tried to give me cookies and they looked <laughs> really happy to see me and i don't know if they were just like youth yes bring the youth in so i ran away well you know calmly and uh never registered and i really i think that um you should if you're going to run for state rep in uh new hampshire take a good long look at the two parties that are really available and think about which one reflects your values the most because every activist you know, I mean, we, we all say that we're liberty-oriented, libertarian, voluntarist, whatever, and so we can have a conversation about any given topic, guns, you know, s- I don't know, sex or uh, economy or whatever, and we pretty much agree, but there are issues yeah. that get each of us, like, pissed off. Like, I think that... What are your issues? Free market stuff, but sexism, especially, drives me insane. Um, and uh, it's kind of funny because I've talked to real Democrats since... Uh, registering as a Democrat in order to run for state rep and <laughs> the level of sexism that they exude is offensive. Like this woman uh, in New Hampshire runs a blog. I won't mention it. She doesn't deserve the advertising. I don't and know she, talking about. she posted this um, rant. A different uh, a guy who's a state rep said some said that a, that a different woman who's running for a government position was beautiful and that her opponent was ugly as sin and so his whole blog post was about how he's predicting that the beautiful woman will will win because people will vote for someone that they're attracted to over someone who is apparently ugly as sin so then this blogger lady posts this blog ranting about how women are oppressed and women are um 
women suffer the burden of having to be attractive in addition to being intelligent or responsible or capable or timely or whatever. And I agreed with a lot of that. I definitely feel that pressure in my life that I can't just show up in my sweatpants and sweatshirt and, you know, no makeup on. And I haven't bathed in three days, which is me any given day of the week and still be able to make an impression on someone based on the skills that I bring to the table. But men, I feel like they have more of an opportunity to do that. Um, so I agreed with her wholeheartedly. And then I left. So, so basically you're sexist to men. No, 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 no. I, I acknowledge that things are different for different people based on social reasons. But so I commented on her post and I said um, that, yes, definitely, I feel this pressure in my life as a female to live my life this way. But I hope that you also acknowledge that um, men are objectified. Men are stereotyped. Um, for example, men are, are beaten. Right. And they're told that they should not hit a woman back so they can't act in self-defense because women are frail and innocent and men are just supposed to take it, which is a whole bunch of bullshit. And then male rape happens. It's a real thing. Men can't control when they appear to be aroused or not. So and men can actually be frightened into having an erection. So it is entirely possible based on what I've read, not anything I've tried. Fear boners are real. Yeah, it's entirely possible I'll to rape tell. a man. <laughs> go, go, no, oh, okay. go ahead. I, I, I thought he had a story. <laughs> I don't have a story. <laughs> I'm just I thought like he had a, a story of a fear bone. I, I'm getting one right now. I didn't have anything for that. Yeah, go on. So yeah, so all these things are real, and I commented that to that effect on her blog. Um, you know, and I said that women can set an example for men who are who are stereotyping and objectifying women, and also women can set an example for future generations by treating men as individuals, not making assumptions and not collectivizing them. She posted my comment because she likes to police her comments a lot and then told me to take my uh, drivel elsewhere. And she posted in all caps something like, what about the poor men? So she was like really offended that I said, yeah, you're right, this happens to women. And you know what, stuff happens to men too. Men aren't treated as individuals, they're collectivized. And she thought that was just like, who cares? That was her reaction which is feminazi at its peak, and that is disgusting. Well, the question is, how are you going to change that in the state house? Oh, pff, I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, you said that was, that was your issue. I, I figured oh, well, that's why you're, yeah, you're, running, that's you're running on changing sexism for New Hampshire. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know what your platform is. I can't make is. people not be jerks. But, but, uh, but that's what I'm saying is that when you consider which party you want to run with, um, there are a lot of factors to consider, but for me, I think that um, I th it would be harder for me emotionally to participate in the Republican Party, even though there are issues that I agree with them on, like free markets and stuff like that, um, and that I jive more with the with the Democrats. You know, I really racism and sexism, while they have their proper place in comedy, um, hurt me to talk about when people say racist words. I don't even want to hear it. So I think that I fit in better with them. They don't think that. They want me gone. Yeah. <laughs> but I was that was how I made I that decision. I yeah, I hear you on the whole racist. One thing I love about, like, at least at least with this community and, like, most libertarians and voluntarists and anarchists, whatever you want to call yourself, um, one thing I, I, I love about most most people that I've, I've met uh, is they really do treat people as a human being, as an individual like it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from. Like you know, it doesn't matter your background. It doesn't even ma th none of that matters. Like f to me, you're a you are a human being. You're you know just like ev me and everyone else. I don't care that you're a female or male or transsexual, gay, bi, or dare I say poly, but uh, <laughs> or pansexual <laughs> or pansexual. <laughs> What's that? Oh, that, that's that's that's, it's that's when you transcend gender with uh, your how you like people or. Whatever. You don't even like consider so like dogs gender. Too, in or it. Um, I don't think that includes dogs. What about the the cat Ash? I, mm, it might I include heard Ash. Like to it includes Ash. Ash is yeah. kinky. Yes, for damn sure. <laughs> she loves being like. Yeah. Ash is definitely a yeah. pansexual kitten. But go on. She, yeah, she is. No, she definitely, definitely is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, like at any rate, like we we all treat everyone as an individual. We don't. I don't. I mean, we're all human beings on this rock that's floating around a star. You know, Earth's my homeland. I don't get. I don't care where people come from or what they look like. Um, unfortunately, Republicans don't really view people that way. Conservatives don't view people that way. Um, well, Democrats are, are better on looking at people. Well, 
a little bit better. I mean, for, for the most part, there's a lot of Democrats that are very racist. I mean, look at the Dixiecrats in the South from, you know, the turn of the century and whatnot. They have Democrats in the South? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they did. I mean, there's this one pocket in Dallas that's a, like a, just a bad yeah, neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. But, so, you're, you're, going, you're going in. What, what? Because you, I, I want to, I want to label you as the new Mark Warden. No, you don't. You don't no, want to be like that. No, that's uh, no P. That's a, a lot of esteem there. I don't deserve it. Mark Warden's an amazing, okay, accomplished person. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Well, what, 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 what can we expect? Uh, uh, you being, you calling yourself a volunteer, is going in. Wh- I have what, no what do you idea. Expect? I have no idea. I don't even really know how to be a state rep. I figure they'll tell me when I show up. Well, no, no, no. You <laughs> don't, don't let them tell you how to be a state rep. You well, tell no, them how to do it. But no kidding. Like, there's a lot of rules. There's a dress code. Um, men have to wear a suit. And I think that they have to have, like, a vote uh, or something has to happen ceremonial for the men to be allowed to take off their jackets. And the women present in the state house have to give consent that the men can take off their, like, I get to decide whether or not. Men can take off their jackets. You it's should. Insane. You should just fuck with them and say I don't consent. <laughs> <laughs> like buck every yeah, buck like every trend, every like degrees. religious ceremony that they have in the state house. Just like <laughs> try to throw a wrench in there. And just stop anything. Like you, you'll have a huge floor debate on your consent to whether or not like another person can take off their jacket. <laughs> Well, I've been wondering if th- anyone's going to listen to me if I like if we're like debating police or something. If all of my statistics come from the crime dramas I watch, like I don't know if they're going to take me seriously. <laughs> well, uh, my hope is just uh, and honestly, please don't pass any laws. Like that's my goal. Like don't 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 do that. Just try and get rid of stuff. I'm fine with you get get rid of everything. Well, or at least stop them. But just like passing a law could be like passing a law that prevents the government from doing X, Y, Z. If you know, that could be a good law to pass. If you, you can know, get like you can't buy bear cats. That's pro liberty uh, law to pass. I like that know? law. It's yeah. concise. Yeah. If you can get <laughs> laws that stop them from doing stuff, I'm okay with that. Well, for the most part. It's it's a really complicated game there. Like my friends that are state reps, um, try to tell me about how their days go. My eyes just glaze over. I know I have a huge learning curve. Um, for example, the way that the votes are presented when you look up how your state rep voted, it says yay or nay, but you actually have to look at how the bill was introduced to even understand. So there might be a bill on marijuana and their vote might've been nay. And you'd be like, you jerk, you voted against marijuana. And then they're like, you're, you stupid citizen. You don't know what's going on. And the bill might've been a bill to, uh, it might've said like, um, I guess they have the committee recommendation is either inexpedient to legislate or ought to pass and so the committee recommends a certain stance on the bill and then when it reaches the state house floor and they vote um, they're voting yay or nay against the committee's recommendation so the committee might say that a marijuana bill is inexpedient to legislate and then if you vote nay you're actually voting in favor of marijuana legalization it's really confusing stuff so it's like seriously i don't know how to be a state rep and i'm sure they'll tell me (laughs) <laughs> well, I'm, sh- I'm sure you'll figure it out when you get in there. Um, I would love to see. Uh, I- I'll I'll put my minarchist cap on if you can get full on uh, pot legalization through. I'll I'll, I'll be supportive of you in, in that endeavor. Are you not currently supportive of people running for state rep? Uh, how's I okay. How's, the, uh, how's uh, your little uh, thing I, going? Where you how you live your life? Is there still state in your life now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah you like yeah, pay yeah, taxes yeah. and stuff. I I try not to. So, so like, everything. what's gonna happen if you don't pay your taxes? Well, they'll come. Uh, they'll come with men with costumes and guns. Will come to me and kidnap me and throw me in a cage. I'm well aware of what will happen. So, if we have a, a if we have a a good majority in the state house that pass a law that or a, they repeal a law no, so that your no, taxes no, are look, lower. No, no, look, look, look. He- hear me out. Hear me out. <laughs> I, I've said this. I have. I've actually said this before. Like, I will. Sec. I won't vote for uh, national politics. Like I, I am going to vote in the election, and it's just going to be for free staters and maybe a couple other liberty-oriented candidates. Good. But um, other than that, I like any other uh, any other offices. I'm just going to write something in or just put none of the above or something like that. You should write like Daffy Duck. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Vermin <laughs> Supreme. <laughs> write him in for everything. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. So. And well, the big thing is, because obviously I, I'm an advocate of secession. I'm not trying to say that you're a secessionist, but 
liberty oriented people dislike the federal government and even if they can like at least nullify laws i'd be happy with that so the only way that i can like see a change like that it was be more liberty oriented people in there i'm not against free staters and liberty oriented people running in there as long as they have like the ideology that they don't own me you know that they can't uh write a law that tells me how to live my life um unfortunately democrats and republicans like the normal democrats and republicans you're obviously not a a normal one you actually don't believe that anyone can tell I'm another as person i'm as much a democrat as anyone else is i'm just not um with the establishment i'm not kidding you talk to your uh, a random democratic voter and um they're not they don't the establishment of any party doesn't really reflect the the people that sign up with that party and try to vote with that party I mean, really like the way that voters are like a voter is going to have a strong opinion just like any free stater right or a libertarian a voter is going to have a strong opinion about the death penalty or a strong opinion about taxation or a strong opinion about welfare or immigration and that's it's their only issue and then they look for the party that agrees with them on that issue they register with that party and vote with that party because they're like oh, i don't want the mexicans here and so they're they have to vote republican do you believe taxation is theft yes okay yeah no, I, don't I, I, know, I, I don't know why you're doubting me <laughs> no, okay well then, well then you're good <laughs> no, you're but, fine but that's, that's, that's my thing yeah yeah, yeah i'm yeah. as much a democrat or a republican as any of the republicans or democrats are it's it's meaningless um i think that i guess that the whole point of having political parties is so that um the people that, that uh so i guess to make it easier on voters to identify um candidates that agree with them on issues but it's all bs it doesn't really work that way um that's why politics is such a convoluted game is is because we have these two parties supposedly um everyone in each party uh agrees with the the platform but you go to like the the the, the big thing that the republicans have where they all yell at each other and like delegates vote and stuff what do they call it i don't know right and the the one that we had recently in new hampshire people were outraged because they were like I think there's something about ISIS or no, what is it? Um, Sharia law is part of the, like a, an opposition to Sharia law is, is part of the Republican platform now in New Hampshire, which is what? like, what? I know. Like, can we find someone in New Hampshire are, that even are, are, participates are, are in Are people I don't know. worried that Sharia law is going to be enacted in Manchester yeah, or guess, anything like that? Yeah, like maybe. that the police are going to have to like come up to me because I'm uh, like, you know, being what, what, whatever it might be or whatnot. I mean, is that actually a concern of conservatives in the state house? Well, so that's a fine example of just the how es the establishment is, um, and the f and the fact that so many people within the Republican Party, the delegates, you know, that are registered Republicans, they went out there um, to participate in the process of creating the platform for the Republican Party, and they're outraged that that's part of it. Um, I think that sh that's proof right there that you're any given. Um, Republican and any given Democrat does not agree with the establishment. And usually they're single issue voters. You know, just like I was. Before I found libertarianism, there was just one thing that made me really mad. And that re that was why I voted Republican the first time that I voted. You know, and because I didn't know enough about all the issues. And I think that most people will never know a lot about all the issues. They'll, they'll stay mad about that one thing, and that's going to control how they vote. But, you know, so just because someone's registered Democrat, it doesn't mean that they care about all the things that your psychotic yeah. establishment <laughs> democratic party member uh cares about where where do you see the uh where do you see all this going especially with like the state house with uh, multiple liberty candidates getting in because um, I, I would predict maybe what 20 to 25 getting in something like that how many this year yeah this year um i believe we have uh, around 60 people on the the ballot going to the general will all of them will like a majority of them win or are we just looking probably at like, oh, 60 is even huger than what i've thought so let's let's just make it a couple hundred we're gonna 300 of the state out uh, of the four, what, 400 we're, the, the free staters are just gonna take over the entire state house don't don't worry guys it's gonna it's gonna happen um wh where, do you, where do you like see this going in the next year or so like how crazy is it gonna get in the state well house? i think it, oh i don't know <laughs> i've never really um I think that every two years we're going to have more and more free staters in the state house. Absolutely, without a doubt. I don't think that there's going to be a year where the number goes down, but I could be wrong. Um, and I think that the more people that register to run for state rep and run campaigns, um, for every person that does that, they probably inspire a few more to do that. You know, in two years when they get their next opportunity. I think that 
of, of all the forms of activism, I think that inside the system has got to be the most effective. Because if you look at uh, civil disobedience, stuff like that, I mean, look at Ed and Elaine Brown. Um, you know about them? So they resisted their yeah, federal yeah, they, income they tax. Got, they got kidnapped by the state. And yeah, life in prison. Yeah. Because they didn't pay their taxes. They got a bill. And now they're in jail for the rest of their <laughs> their lives. And it's really sad. So, and then, you know, Ian uh, Freeman is always trying to avoid peace jail be, time. Peace be upon him. Um, poor Rich Paul. You know, and jail really sucks. Jail is not a, a place where you can live a productive life. You're not um, really able to grow emotionally. Jail is dam- damaging and traumatizing to people psychologically. Um, and that's, it's it's supposed to be just a punishment. And like, you've learned your lesson and now you're going to do the right thing. But it screws people up so much that they come out worse than they went in. Yeah. Um, and this is the, the, the situation the majority of the time with people that are, that are sentenced to jail. Um, so there's, anyway, and that's a whole other topic. But... So I don't think that civil disobedience is that effective when you look at cost benefit. You know, like you might get the attention of a few people, you might change a couple minds, but you've also wasted like six months of your short life. It it depends. And you come out traumatized. It depends. Uh, I'm going to slightly debate you on that. It de- it depends on what you're doing. Rosa Parks, fine, you got me. Yeah, Rosa Parks. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't I wasn't going to go. With that. I was going to. I was going to. I was going to re- uh, refer to uh, Derek J's victimless crime spree. Yeah, like case in point. Neither one of us would be here sitting at this table if across it wasn't for that you. movie yeah yeah really? if it wasn't for that movie i signed fuck? like because of that movie yeah so did i i watched it in new hampshire huh <laughs> well you already here you beat us to the punch <laughs> that movie is playing this friday right yeah it's or playing it at convention no, saturday, saturday morning saturday? i believe saturday? yeah it's, saturday it's, morning it's, it's a grindhouse double feature with 101 reasons to move to new hampshire yeah i am actually because i mean both of us like you know we sign the uh the pledge f- because of Derek J's victimless crimes for Bo Davis, the director, producer, and, and Vince and whatnot. Um, this is like their spiritual successor to that film. So like, I am like, I want to go there just to watch that documentary. That's like my number one thing. Like I really want to watch that because I, I, I'm a fan of Bo's work. So like, I really want to, you know, I want to see what, what he has next up his sleeve. I'm excited. I was I was reading some of his like the script he'd scripted it out and stuff earlier, and uh, it looks really good. Well, he's put you know throughout the like the last six months he's been uh, like posting like you know shorts mm-hmm. on his YouTube channel of like you know uh, edits of like what he's been doing like you know stuff that he's filmed and whatnot. Um, Does the movie music make anyone else kind of tear up, or is it just me? movie music you know like where it's like somebody talking and then they have like b-roll and there's like the piano or s- i don't know violins in the background and it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm a movie star no well, depends on the movie i mean obviously yeah music no, but and I mean like in, scenes in both in both stuff specifically like have you seen uh libertopia mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Have, have you seen that yes About, i have seen like, that but it's like old school. That, that's really old school. That that's one I like that cry so many times when I watch it. It's in full length on YouTube now for free. Yes, I, I have watched. That's where what's his name uh, walks across the country, right? Will Buchanan. Yeah. Yeah, I've not met him yet. Oh, he lives in Concord. Yeah, I've never met him yet. He's cool. Yeah. He goes to comedy sometimes. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Oh, you you have a the that um, speaking of, you have a uh, uh event event for that, don't you? Yeah. Well. Um, you know, Boston is kind of a hub for for stand-up comedy. You got, you know, Chicago, New York, and Boston are kind of like the places where people get are discovered. And uh, so New, New Hampshire benefits from that and that we have a pretty good local um, open mic scene in Manchester specifically. And I got I got to hanging out with the, the comedy folks maybe a year or two ago. Here in Manchester, just cause it's it's a nice environment. People are really supportive of each other. Um, people go for the first time and totally fail really hard at being funny, and then they get like high fives from the c- seasoned comedians and pity laughs. But anyway, so um, Laugh for Your Die is a weekly open mic show in Manchester, hosted by Nick David, and he's been doing it for ages. And November twelfth is the one night a year that instead of having open mic, they're gonna hand select and hire comedians to come on and perform for free so they're going to come from all over new england connecticut boston whatever and we're going to raffle off prizes um to benefit shire sharing so it's, it's really cool it's like i think it, that this event is a good example of how shire sharing is run i try to get as much as i can for free yeah, yeah. so that we're not spending money to try to raise money so the venue is free the comedians work for free the whole thing is is free shire sharing doesn't spend money to put on the event so any raffle tickets that you buy go directly to 
the actual cause. That's awesome. That's beautiful. Uh, Shard, when are you? When are you gonna do stand up comedy? You're you're like a comedian. I was wondering. I don't know how good I'd be at at, at stand up comedy. Like, uh, I really like video editing. I like that that medium. Um, oh man, I think I I if I tried to do stand up comedy, I'd end up sounding like Chris Cantwell doing stand up comedy. <laughs> Not be that bad. Oh, which is yeah, that can't I, be that bad. Yeah, I don't are you know. Advocating for needless violence. Um, I I would, but I'd try to be funny doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard to find that medium. It's that's, tough. That's definitely a. a and it, yeah, it's also tough, like um, producing something, um, from a liberty perspective. You know, it you'll alienate a lot of people, right? But then people are expecting a liberty perspective out of me. Yeah, that's kind of that's no. who you are. Most comedians are libertarian and they just don't know it. Hmm. Well, most I'm people in general like, are, or they don't know it. Yeah, you know, I, but I also think that um, a lot of comedy is driven by like an awareness of the absurdity that surrounds us, and I think that libertarianism is kind of in the same wavelength. That's a good point. Yeah, that is very true. Uh, well, you could always talk about how libertarians are very socially awkward. Oh, yeah, I could do that, the awkward thing. Yeah, 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 like, I don't know, like, everyone here is a little socially awkwardly no. off. Yeah, no. Uh, no, no. <laughs> like, everyone's normal, like, there's just normal people, like, everyone everyone you meet is very, very normal and whatnot. No, ev- everyone's crazy here, <laughs> yeah. Everyone's crazy everywhere. Yeah, no, that's kind of true, but it's more true here than anywhere else, probably, I don't know. I've I've met a lot of crazy people since I moved here. Maybe liberty. Good people. Don't get me wrong. Great, great, great. You know, people just socially awkward. I mean, I'm probably one of them too. So whatever. Aren't you trying to sell people on the FSP? And yeah, like, no, I'm trying to tell. Everyone here is super weird. They're gonna w- I, make you feel uneasy. When yeah, you meet them. they they can be they can be he- they can come here and be weird with us instead of being weird by themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, That's absolutely. A good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't left your house in a week because you're playing World of Warcraft and there's a pile of Red Bull cans on your desk, move for the Free State Project. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't want the I don't want the wow good people. No, they should come. No, no, <gasps> no. You just they, you just blew it. They're, uh, they they're listening it? right now. They're listening while, while they're, while playing, they're playing, playing World of Warcraft. Of Warcraft. Yes. Do people still play World he of Warcraft? He smashed his Red Bull like can on the tw- table. He's mad. We came out like 15 years ago. Are people still playing yet? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and right now he's they freaking pro- out because you're narrating exactly <laughs> what he's doing. They probably are still yeah. playing. Now they're probably looking at know. themselves like, oh, my <laughs> God, I am still playing this after 15 years. Maybe I should leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> he's running around like that movie Stranger Than Fiction. Like, how does he know all these things about me? <laughs> okay, anyway. God, It'd be amazing if that actually is the case <laughs> at some point. Um, but, no, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for people. You know, th- th- it's... Yeah, be weird oh. with us. We have yeah. a lot of fun though here yeah. in the, the Asperger State Project. It's, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> make the move. Yeah, make the move. There's bacon. There yeah, is. We a, have, oh I God. mean, if we're gonna be stereotypical, there's bacon. There's beer. There's Aspergers. There's beautiful women. There's yes, there are people living in their cars, but they but they're like buses. You they're, know, they're like not buses. They're not a buses. Yes, exactly. Yeah, people that live in tiny houses. People that live in domes, like dome structures. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little specific. There, yeah. There's people that live in, in private clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. Yeah. Underground. Yeah, underground clubs private clubs. That everyone knows about. <laughs> 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 We're so secret. Yeah, it's very, very secret, apparently. Um, anywho, uh, is there. Uh, oh, one, there was one other question I want to ask you. Because uh, you have kids. so Just one. Just one? Yeah. I thought you had no. two. No, I usually have around five. Yeah, I always see you. Uh, I've seen you with multiple butter. kids. <laughs> I just assumed. I, I, I wasn't. No. Oh, what, what's it like uh, raising a, do- a daughter? Right. Yeah. Okay. What's it like? Her raising name's Sophia. Sophia. She's eight. Okay. She's been here since she was three. Okay. Um, Wh- what is that like? Well, I can give you an example. So, um, when I lived in Texas and I had a kid, I didn't know who to. I don't know who to hang out with. You know that also has a kid, and. I had a friend from high school who um, had a kid around the same time I did, and we got together, and um, so our kids played together. They grew up together, and when she, when my friend didn't like what her son was doing, she would hit him in the face, and that was hard to deal with because I respected her as a person. I still do, and I like her, and she's my friend, but I just couldn't cope with like how she was raising her kid, and I kind of realized that um, maybe the difference between the two of us is that I had given a lot of thought into 
how I would raise my child and what I thought would be effective parenting versus, in, you know, like have parenting that creates a serial killer. I don't know. <laughs> and I'm not saying that she's going to do that. Her kid's really, he's a good kid. But, um, you know, so I'd, I think I'd given a lot of thought into it. And she was just kind of like, well, this is what my parents did. This is how I'm going to raise my kid. This is just how you raise a kid. And it was also really hard to have my child around them when that happened because I didn't even want my child to witness it. Like there are, like you know how, I don't know, super conservative people won't talk about sex around their kids. There are topics I won't talk about around my kid because I think that they're too heavy. Like suicide is an example. I don't mention it. So I try not to expose her to things like that. And when you're just making friends with your friends that have kids, you don't know what you're really walking into and how they're raising their kids. How much do you censor yourself uh, in front of her? Or how much do you try to control like what she can see well, or that's whatnot? Yeah, that's a funny thing. So, well, so it's, she's eight. So we're kind of scooting into like, crap, I really got to talk about sex soon. I have explained that to her like half a dozen times and she never remembers. So every time I explain it, it's like, what the heck? I've never heard this before. And, but I keep explaining it. So, I mean, I'm pretty open about a lot of stuff. I cuss around her. She used to cuss a lot and um, I never asked her to stop. And in fact, I may have encouraged it by giggling because it's really cute when a four-year-old says fuck. <laughs> but, um, but uh, you know, she I wanted her to learn when it's appropriate and when it's inappropriate. And she went to school. I think she, she started at a new school in first grade. She's in third grade now. But when she was in first grade, I think she said damn and penis in the same day at school. And <laughs> that was when she learned. I'm not going to say stuff like this at school because it offends the people around me or they don't think it's appropriate or whatever. And that's what I wanted. I didn't want to raise her saying those are bad words or, you know, creating these bullshit ideas. Um, so she's a really well-adjusted kid. She's extremely mature and she tends to get along better with kids that are older than she is instead of kids that are, you know, her age. W one thing I do whenever I'm around uh, kids or whatnot, like I don't, I don't treat them like a kid. Like, I treat them as another human being, and I talk to them as if they're, you know, another human being. Like, I might, I might treat them just a, a slightly little different, but, like, I'm not going to, like, you know, like, push them to a side or, like, you know, like, their like, ideas oh no, or whatnot. Did you get a poo -poo? Yeah, yeah, you no, I talk to them as if, yeah, th I, <laughs> I talk to them as if they're a normal, a, you know, human being, just a little bit younger. Like, I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm not going to censor myself, really, and, like, you know, if they, whatever they, comes up, comes up, but, um, I'm not going to treat them any differently. You know, I'm going to yeah, treat them the same. Yeah, and I don't think that you should. I mean, it, if but you a lot run of people do. A, a lot of parents do. A lot of people in general treat kids as if they're kids instead of, you know, they're actually yeah. human beings that you can actually talk to. And kids really appreciate not being talked down to as well. Like, I remember being a kid and being talked down to all the time, and I hated that. Well, what were you doing to get talked down to? I, you know, I was like throwing dirt at stuff. But still, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't want you to talk down to me. I'm making mud castles. Well, I think it depends a lot on the kid that you're talking to because Sophia has a friend that um, his father and his mother treat him like a baby. Well, treat him like his age, I guess. And I talked to Sophia like she's on my wavelength. And one day I spoke to him like that and he broke down and cried. I mean, I made the kid cry because I was just like honest and direct with him. You're and not, so uh, you're not like a helicopter mom or anything like that. No. We're good, she's good. usually on the iPad and I'm on the laptop <laughs> 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 in separate rooms. And she's only eight. But, but yeah, I mean, to, so what it's like to raise a kid in the FSP is entirely different. I'm not like, well, I know you and you have a kid, so let's get them together and have a play date. And then you don't know what you're exposing them to. It's the opposite. It's like, I know you and I know what you stand for. And I have a, at least a minimum uh, standard that I can expect you, uh, your behavior to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's, so it's really cool. Um, I was lucky enough, despite having this completely alternative method for raising Sophia with letting her cuss and you know there is no Santa Claus but please don't tell other kids that you know like we've never we did the Santa Claus thing last year but it was mostly just to prank her because <laughs> she knows better so we like left a bunch of presents out just to fuck with her <laughs> and the whole time I'm like so do you care where these came from and she's like no <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't fall for it but anyway so I was lucky enough to meet some people in New Hampshire, my friends, the Garcias, and they raised their kids, their two children. You probably see me with them a lot the same way that I raised Sophia. So we don't have conflict where they're doing something and I'm like, oh, God, I don't want Sophia to do that or see that. And I'm pretty sure that I don't do stuff that terrifies them. <laughs> but yeah. if I have, they haven't told me. <laughs> but um, so it, we have like blended our lives. They spend a lot of time at their house. They spend a lot of time at mine. Their kids are at my house all the time. 
um, you know, and our kids sleep over at each other's houses without um, any problems whatsoever. They're practically sisters. So it's really great for Sophia to have like a best friend that she can completely be herself with. Um, and we and our family share values, too. I mean, it's like, you know, if I had a sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I just gotcha. found her. That's, that's beautiful. And I think that that's how it is for most people that have kids here is it's very likely that you're going to share a lot of values with the, the people that your kids hang out with. Well, one thing that I love is like we're building a free society. All right. Like I, that's how I view it. I view this as, you know, we're not just like coming here doing some activism or whatnot. Like I, I really do view it as we're trying to build a free voluntary society, like inside a prison almost like inside of like, a, you know, we're, we're trying to build this free society and we need kids. We need to <laughs> populate the, the society, you know, and we're only going to do that if there's more and more liberty babies and more, li- you know, what more is families. Stefan Molyneux says, right, is that he encourages people to raise their children in like the least oppressive method m- possible so that when they do encounter oppression for the first time in their lives, they'll be so outraged that they'll become they're, activists. They're not they're not domesticated into it. You know, yeah. they're not. uh I mean, right now, most families, most kids are d- being domesticated into the tyranny that we're under. And if we can like stop that now and then mind you, I want to live free now. I don't want to wait for I don't want to be, you know, 90 years old when the next generation takes the reins and, you know, actually frees everybody like I want to be free now. That being said, I, I view kids as like, the you know, the the backup, you mm-hmm. know, they're they're like the back. They're, they're plan no, they're, B they're or phase they're, two. they're phase two yeah. of it. You know, like it's a, it's a perpetual <laughs> thing going plan on and going no forward. Kids. Yeah, that's, that's true. Thing. That's true. <laughs> um, that was but uh, yeah, yeah. But at any rate, like, yeah, they're they're the next wave and we need another wave. We need to propagate ourselves in in regards to people thinking freely you know the the state's always going to try and program kids and domesticate them and whatnot and we need to be able to have another phase like the the to do what we're doing now and that's another beautiful thing about like my story about finding the garcias and you know connecting with them is that um i think you know I guess in psychology, it's pretty standard to expect the kid to totally rebel against what their parents stand for. So I might, you know, Sophia might agree with me now that she owns her body and gets to decide what she wants to do with it. But for all I know, she'll sign up with the Republican or Democrats one day when she's 18. And, you know, she'll become some, I don't know, a a global warming activist or something terrifying like that. And but with her friends there to reinforce her as she grows you know, like it, we all share the values together. She isn't just hearing her crazy mom spouting off crazy yeah, stuff that, yeah. and she knows no one else agrees with it. Instead, you know, she's not just going to school alone. Or, like Sophia won't wear her Gadsden flag t-shirt to school. She won't say Free State Project. Walt Havenstein, a, a candidate for governor, came to her school to like, I don't know, look cool on TV or something and uh, try to get votes from the students' parents. And she was chosen among like a small group of students for a roundtable discussion with him. And I was really trying to get her to ask him if he's a free stater because it's really funny because he's from out of state, but he's not liberty at all. And she's like, I'm not saying that, you know, so she's aware that there's this the, she has two lives. She has she can cuss at home. You know, we can be ourselves at home. And when she goes to school, she needs to participate wow. in that world. But with her friend Michaela there to share that with her, that we have two lives I don't think that Sophia is going to, I think that the odds are lower that she's going to grow up and just completely rebel. I, I never imagined it'd be, because um, I always feel like when I go into my, my day job, like I'm, I'm living a double life. Like I, I live this life and then I go to work and I'm living, you know, I'm, it's a double life. I don't talk about. You never like, imagine an eight-year-old having two. I never imagine <laughs> an eight-year-old like having a double life. Yeah. Like, you know, like the kids in the project, like also having to deal with living a double life like i never I, that never crossed my mind that you know that that is an issue even in like you know grade school or whatnot um that they're actually you well, know Sophia having to just, go through that she's never had any problems but she anticip- i mean she listens to our adult conversations where we talk about our daily lives you know i don't i'm i, I don't really whisper many things outside of her earshot so she knows a yeah. lot about the kind of activism that we do, the reactions that we get from people that are opposed to freedom. As, as she should. So, yeah. you know, she's careful. Yeah. You should see her at Pork Fest, man. She walks around the place like she owns it. That's awesome. Like the last, uh, let's see, in 2013 and 2012, I gave her a walkie-talkie to try to keep track of her. Both years she lost the walkie. Now she just walks around on her own. I'm like, I don't even know where she is. Well, that's and beautiful. she's completely safe. And yeah. She knows, and this past year, Michaela, her, her our little friend, came with us for the week 
and stayed without her family like the longest she'd gone without seeing him I think and um and at first Michaela was so nervous and she didn't want to leave the campsite she's like I don't know anyone and Sophia you know took her around and introduced her to all the kids she only sees every pork fest and you know before long I didn't know where either uh, either of them were you're such a great parent. You know, I, I, well, I, I took these kids that. to a, a to a experiment. festival of a couple thousand people, and then they just went on their own. Who knows? Yeah, 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 we, yeah, yeah we walked yeah. past the guy in the loincloth, and I was just like, "Sophia, <laughs> yeah. what do you think about that?" And she's like, "I don't know." What, what about the guy that was being pulled by a leash? Did, did they walk by that I don't guy know. too? They probably saw him. <laughs> 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 yeah, and they they colored with chalk with uh, manic from Keen, from R- Mariah. Oh, that's and, cute. You know, the chalk wars continued at Porkfest with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's they went full keen at, at, at Porkfest. <laughs> they went full keen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyways, we're we're actually way past our time frame as it is. So, uh, Amanda, where can uh, pimp your uh, site really quick? Where can everyone donate? Oh, um, www.shiresharing.org. So that's S H I R E sharing. dot org, and the donate buttons are on the right hand side. And do it soon, kids, before Thanksgiving. And also, if you're in New Hampshire, come volunteer with us. Uh, join the Facebook group, facebook.com slash group slash Shire Sharing. Um, join the group anyway, even if you're not in New Hampshire, because the bulk of the discussion, um, I post every little detail, all the developments in there. It's fun. Sweet. And uh, Shire Dude, where can people find you? ShireDude.com. All right. And uh, I'm at uh, VRebel.com. And obviously, this show... Get it at rebelloveshow.com. Uh, get us on Stitcher or iTunes, whatever podcast platform you choose, or even watch us on YouTube. And maybe feel free and donate to all three of us some Bitcoin. But if you're only going to donate one this time, do it for Shire Sharing. All right. And we're out, guys. Peace. Peace. Vote for Pedro. <laughs> Thank you.